Welcome to the ULGA grounds for this Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup encounter between UL and TUS Midwest. A load of the colleges changed their names in recent years. So just to clarify, that's the old Limerick IT or Limerick RTC. Uh, they haven't won it in quite some time, 2007 the last time. For UL, they are the defending champions. James e. O'Connor, an All-Ireland winner with Clare, but obviously a former Electric Ireland Fitz Cup, uh, Fitzgibbon Cup player. Uh, you know all about this competition. You know all about how hard it is to come here, whether or not it's uh, from near or far. Yeah, great competition, Oisín. Um, great Fitzgibbon Cup memories. Not, however, in UL, um, 1994, came down here, played in the quarter-final, and it was being hosted in, in Galway, where I was in college at the time, and uh, we had an epic... Uh, battle with Brian Lohan and Shawnee McMahon and Fergal Hartley all wearing the UL jersey and um, came up short by a point after extra time so yeah not an easy place to come to and get a result although conditions Oshin, you know miles apart from the sodden uh, wet pitch we played on that occasion because the pitch is absolutely perfect um, perfect conditions here tonight lovely crisp cool evening and um, and both teams um, you know getting to the latter stages of their warm up and we'll be shortly ready to go talk to me about this place because although you didn't go here you're very close to it, both literally and metaphorically, uh, and you would have played against UL. But um, when we walked around the campus here, you said you, you barely recognised it. Yeah, look, look, Oshin, it's so impressive. Um, I mean, you know, behind us, you know, there's, there's, there's two astro-size, astroturf pitches, full-size J that I didn't know existed. I mean, I know the 4G pitches out. The, the, the far side of the university from where we're positioned here, you know, the opposite end of where the sports centre is. But, uh, yeah, the facilities here are, are, are just tremendous. And... You know, I suppose if you're a young student with, you know, ambitions of playing into county hurling, um, certainly everything you could require, you know, in terms of facilities are here at your disposal. And uh, this isn't, a, 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 you know, an advertisement for you well, but you have to credit them with, with, with what they've done and what they have here. And, um, you know, certainly it's a team tonight that's laden with inter-county talent and, and LIT, unfortunately, look like they're going to be really up against it. You can admit it, you feel old when you walk around here. You feel what? You feel old when you walk around here. You do, yeah. you do. Um, and it's it's a young man's game. But, uh, yeah, and, and actually, look, looking at these guys now, they're so well conditioned, you know, so well prepared, um, so fit looking, powerful, strong looking, um, you know, two really well conditioned sides. And uh, listen, it's, it's, you know, UL's you'd imagine to lose, but LIT uh, will bring a challenge. There's that local derby element to it, an awful lot of Clare, Limerick Tipperary players on both sides. They, they, they know each other, club mates in opposition. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to a really good, really good contest. And it should be a good contest in really good conditions, not a puff of breeze in the air, and it's and it's dry. Yeah, I mean, Ocean, as I said, it's, it's one of those nights where, you know, you, you couldn't ask for better conditions. Um, you know, no breeze worth that we're talking about. Ideal conditions. And, um, yeah, the, the, the scene is certainly set. We'll spot if there's any late changes to the teams um, in a minute or so. Uh, TUS Midwest taking on UL of course UL progressing in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup as well they will play against the University of Galway next week in the quarterfinals also in the uh, Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup DCUD E D Dokusharan taking on uh, MTU Cork TU Dublin up against uh, UCD and St Mary's taking on UCC uh, we will have live coverage of two of those games and uh, we will inform you which games in the next couple of days. That's the football. The focus right now on hurling. UL in the mostly white jerseys. TUS Midwest in the, the dark jerseys off to the right-hand side. can before the storm UL the defending champions know a victory tonight we'll earn them a home quarter final which is such a big deal as you've already outlined James e for TUS this is their opener ATU Galway with uh, them in the next stage of what is a round robin section in the uh, Fitzgibbon the Sigerson is a bit different to the Fitzgibbon in, in its structure but uh, it's not knockout but it's still important it is a scoring difference could come into it, Oshin. I mean, you know, so it's really important from LIT that they, or TUS, that they go at it hard tonight. Um, you know, put their best foot forward, attack it from the off. Um, you know, because, okay, they're underdogs tonight, but they still have a lot to play for, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think they'll, they'll put it up to you well. Just hope, as I said, they get off to a good start, get themselves in the game, um, and give themselves a chance. Well, good conditions for a game of hurling, as we say. Delighted to have you on board wherever you're watching from. And this should be 
an intriguing encounter, a local derby. And you can join us on social. You can join the conversation through the hashtag First Class Rivals. So the toss is done. And we're about to begin. Chilly enough night, there's a, a bit of a, a bite in it. And we're waiting for a slitter. James O'Connor getting right into the thick of it, running out and asking for a copy of the program. To US with the late change. And the ball is in, the game is on. Trying to dig it up there is Dara Corcoran, fresh from Crow Park and another AIB All-Ireland club title. The hurling definitely won't be played. Keelan Malloy of Dunloy cracking a joke on Twitter last night, replay the hurling. He's a good player, good sense of humour as well. It's Corcoran again, a good man to spread it about, but uh, TUS have a sweeper back there and they're able to clear it. It's Sean Long from Napiershik, county championship winner last season. Dara Tynan is after replacing Cahlo Mahoney, by the way, in the TUS team. You've got live commentary of us getting the programme as well as live commentary of us on this programme. James Power allowed that to beat him. It does come to Mikey Kiley, who really ripped it up in this competition last year. He was on the Electric Island Rising Star team. Kean Galvin, a minor winner in 2019, taps it over. That's the first score. Yeah, listen, lovely simple ball back out from Mikey Kiley. Galvin made himself available, you know, a player in clear that we've, we've big hopes for and um, made no mistake and a good start for UL. For TUS, this is a big ask, especially when you consider UL have already had a game and played well and put up a big score against a ATU Galway, 2.23 to 2.10 in tough conditions up in Galway. It's a free to UL. Yeah, and a kind of a, a bit of a, a needless one to be honest about it. Um, you know, Brian O'Mara coming out strong, powerful and... Uh, you know, obviously impeded the referee, thought about giving the advantage, but, you know. Opportunity now for Goro O'Connor to, yep. to notch uh, UL second. 11 points in the last game. From Moyne Temple to Tipperary. As we say, no real breeze, great conditions for free takers, and Garrod O'Connor dissects the post. Good free from him. Yeah, made no mistake. Again, Oshin, you know, you can't see if he's at this level, um, these guys are going to punish you. TUS could do with a settling score, no need to panic yet, of course. Ogo Dwyer fumbling, but keeping his feet with Tynan, trying to pick it up then with Donlan, a bit of a flick, it didn't quite work out. And away they go through Garrod O'Connor, he's got one from a free. Does he fancy one from play? Yes, he does. Garrod O'Connor keeps it on frame. Fantastic strike after a fantastic run. Yeah, and I think LIT probably... Uh, could feel aggrieved, Oshin. You know, I thought maybe they might have got a free at the other end of the field, but no advantage. And, you know, Grover Connor, that's, a, that's another excellent score. And, you know, backed himself, plenty of confidence, and obviously in a good vein of form. Keen Broderick pucking it out. Got great credit for keeping his club in the senior grade last year. Apparently, he played unbelievably well in the playoff. Paddy Donlan from Broadford into the hand of Robin Mouncey. Can the clear hurler get the first score for his team? The answer is no. Yeah, Rob Mounds, he's a shooter, you know, he's a guy that you'd want the ball in the hands of, but um, yeah, just difficult angle and, uh, you know, just flashed it wide. The score they probably needed, Oshin. And another break for UL, but they made it come their way. Here's James Power of Clan A and Waterford. Good pass. A slip, unfortunately, for Sean Toomey, the Corkman. Slips it out of the tackle, looking for Kylie. Gave away the free. The referee says he threw it. Yeah, and he possibly might have been awarded a free the other way, but... Um, you know, you often don't get those frees in the Fitzgibbon. There certainly wouldn't be a free. I don't think it needs a county level either. So, um, yeah, free out for, for Keane Broder, chance to clear his lines. TUS could do with the score going after Kevin McCarthy. Couldn't make it his. UL on top in every position at the moment, Jamesy. Yeah, well on top, Ocean. Um, and looking the game very much been played on their terms at the moment. So, 
Yeah, T West just need a score now, just need to batten down the hatches a little bit, get themselves into the game. James Power lost it, Ger Grant takes it. Captain of his club, Upper Church Drumban from Tipperary. Says an awful lot about him that he's captaining his club, even though he's a, a young guy. Eric Killeen of Rath Downey Earl and Leash fumbled it. Bit of a nervy start for TUS. That can happen when you're at the home of the champions and you're playing your first competitive game of the competition. What's the referee's decision here? Throw this in, Oshina, think, yeah. So loads of white jerseys and UL bodies in the in the frame, and you know they're likely to come away with it. But no, I don't. Paddy Donnellan does well to win that one. Did really well. To US, still looking for their first score. Johnny Murphy, by the way, is the referee. Here's Aaron Sharon and her. He's won the free and and probably a certain score. They need him to play well. They need him to do exactly what he just did there. Absolutely, yeah. And as I said, you know, Shanahan and, and Robin Mounsey, I suppose the two guys up front, you know, with the intercounty experience for, you know, TUS, um, you know, will need to obviously stand up tonight. And Shanahan probably had a chance to put it over off his off his right side, but he favours the left. And you know, in a way, maybe lucky to win the free. But Robin Mounsey, you'd imagine, won't make any mistake with this one. He's a tricky corner forward, isn't he, Mounsey? Yeah, Taps it over, first goal for his team. Yeah, might you settle him down a little bit. Nice, easy free to start with if you're a free taker as well. You well with the line ball. Garrod O'Connor. Takes it short. He was looking for Cahill O'Neill. Does break kindly again for Garrod O'Connor. Garrod O'Connor. And that's a wide. Yeah, and I think in fairness, um, you know, Sean Long maybe just got a little bit of a hook in there. It was enough to, to make sure that ball just went the wrong side of the post. Neither a shot or a pass. Easily taken by Dean Mason. Yeah, Alan Tynan just... Probably needs to put that over. Mason, another one of the All Ireland club winning contingent from Ballyhale, Shamrocks, and Kilkenny. Yeah, Michael Kiley was into the back of a you know, like, the UL TUS player there, and you know, definitely free. Good delivery from Long. That's a great score. Tynan. Fantastic finish from Dara Tynan from way out the field. Yeah, great score, great score. Yeah, Carl O'Neill. Yeah, that's some reply, isn't it? It's not bad at all. Yeah, again, listen, just on the puck out, you know, you can't give a guy like Carl O'Neill uh, that kind of room and, you know, one look straight over the post. Straight between the posts, I should say. 4-2, a lively start. That's going to drop right into the hand of Dean Mason, who has a monster puck of a ball, but it's accurate as well. And just as I say that, he gives it away. Tynan was there waiting. Luckily for UL, it came to Duff. Great take, O'Mara. O'Connor laid it off. That's a shot from a long way out, which goes over the crossbar. It's a guy playing with confidence, Oshin. You know, they're just lovely one two with Groot O'Connor and you know off the left side, um, you know, good score. He's impressed me, Brian O'Mara. He's a, you know he's a good player. Strong, physically powerful. You know, you look at the size of Colin, you know, Colin Coughlin down here as well. Um, you know, Derek Cochran on the far side, it's a fairly imposing half back line uh, that you well have. Good in the air, physically strong, powerful. And O'Mara going forward again. Scooped to Galvin. Laid it off nicely. On the run, Sean Toomey. It's such a relaxed style that Toomey has, but unfortunately, it's wide. Is this her second wide ocean, yeah? That's correct. Yep. Although I'm not going to lie, I brought two pens and both of them have stopped working. So I'm going off memory. Bit of a knock, but he'll drive on. Sean Long. Took his man on there, got past Mark Rogers. Now it's Mounsey. Yeah, having to come very deep though, you know, you've got you one pretty close to the goal. Well worked though. O'Dwyer. 
Yeah, well worked score. Excellent score. Really good score, Oshin. Real battle on there. Cahill O'Neill trying to make it his is James Power. Harry's got a bit of speed. David Tui sticking with him all the way. David, the son of Fergie, of course. An unusual style shot from Cahill O'Neill, which goes wide, a third wide for UL. Yeah, um, no, Cahill wouldn't be happy with that effort now. Um, not even close. You know, probably could have looked to keep, maybe keep it in play. And you know, We haven't seen Mark Rogers yet. You know, Again, a, a guy who's highly touted, very, very highly rated in Clare. And you know, a finisher and, uh, you know, yet to, yet to see any real action. Is this a finish from Kevin McCarthy? No. Kevin McCarthy from Tim Mavara. A club mate of his own, Brislan, has had some success in Limerick recently, coaching Mona Lean to the Limerick Monster and All-Ireland Club title. Yeah, defeated my own club, Oshin, uh, along the way in the, in the semi-final, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, look at fair play to them. They, they um you know, they, they kicked on and, um, and went all the way and, you know, huge for the club. Fantastic. And great to see Andrew Latouche Cosgrave injury free and playing again. It was left behind by O'Mahony. Then he regathered, but under pressure from O'Neill. O'Mahony, very strong on it there. Played under 20 football for Tipperary last season. So a multi-talented athlete. Speaking of athletes, Mouncey. Great tackle. Pork done from the Harps and Leash. Yeah, but again, Oshin, two or three white jerseys in, you know, and Rob Mounsey, um, you know, crowded out and... There was a jersey tug. The referee has a has his book out and possibly a card as well. Yellow card for Manzi. Hard to see what that was for, Rush. You know, you know. He seemed to indicate jersey tug. Yeah, but again, it's hardly a, a yellow card offence. I mean, unless there was a a little flick of the hurley or something. Um, no. Clearly, though, not something that he was. Um, you know, there was a, a slight maybe, flick. Maybe, maybe a little flick, yeah. But I mean, to me, it was, there was nothing in it. And it certainly didn't look like a murder to the card. Here's no. Dean Mason. The wind slightly against him. He's capable of first-class delivery. Juggled and lost by Tynan. UL do have it back. Trying to work it to a shooter. Gary O'Connor, a few better than him, but he couldn't get the shot away. Crowded out. Here's Cahill O'Neill. All-Ireland winner with Limerick. Good pass, James Power. Not an easy one to take because it came at him at pace, but he can't finish it. Yeah, and Alan Tynan did really well working back there, you know, the, the, the from his wing forward position. You know, got a good tackle initially on Cotton O'Neill, forced him to a wider angle, and ultimately James Power put it wide. Wide's mounting, actually, Oshie, now. That's, I think they're fourth or fifth, fifth wide, I think, is it? You're the only one here with a working pen, so I'll go with you on that, four, David. Four, yeah, I'm correct myself. Blocked down by Garrod O'Connor. Good pass, Toomey. Waiting for it and getting it. Toomey. Good pass after a run of wides. A good score, I should say. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Sean Toomey making no mistake, but uh, well worked. All better, Ireland better under from UL. All Ireland under 20 winner with Cork. One of Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup last year with UL. Launched by Broderick. That's a great catch. Fantastic catch. Chance here if he can get first touch. Killeen down. to McCarthy. Yeah, maybe it might have been something on if Kevin McCarthy's touch had been a little bit better there. You know, if he could have got that ball into his hand. But, you know, great catch by Eric Killeen. And, you know, again, if that pass, ideally you want that pass going to hand, Oshin. But uh, they might have been in, might have been in if, he'd, if his touch had been that little bit better. And Mounsey now with an opportunity just to, to reduce the deficit. Mounsey on a crisp night in Limerick. Well, the flag eventually goes up. Yeah, just keeps him in touch, Oshin. You know, 6-4. Still very much in it. For the first two or three minutes, UL came out with all guns blazing, but TUS have settled things down and coming back to battle is Killeen great work by the leash man into the hand of Evan Fitzpatrick took a shot but he was really pressurised there by Colin Cockton 
Yeah, and again, just look at textbook hook. Just enough, and it goes, you know, goes wide. Bally Brown's Callan Coughlin with the diagonal, looking for Sean Toomey, who seems to be who seems to be switching sides. Kicks it into the path of Evan Fitzpatrick. Flipped off to O'Dwyer. Long. Well taken on the stick. Mounsey. Had to go off the stick. That'll drop where it's one on one. TJ Brennan standing up. Yeah, I think he's, you know, the referee clearly called the advantage, Oshin, yeah. um, you know, and so it was always coming back. But uh, yeah, Mounsey out the field now and kind of getting on a bit of ball and been involved in a lot of the good things I think that, um, you know, TUS have done. So, you know, again, this should be comfortable within his range. TJ Brennan, he just looks a proper fullback, doesn't he? The way he just stood there, wasn't moved, didn't give the forward an inch. obviously been Henry's plan as you'd imagine in Galway this year. Yep, well, has already been a big part of the Galway senior panel. Electric Ireland minor All-Ireland winner in 2017. Captain the Galway under 20s, he's a leader as well as a good player. You know all about playing with the fullbacks who are leaders. Yeah, and uh, I'm wondering is Brian Lowen here tonight? From, uh, you know, obviously, man with a big UL pedigree. Great grow off the place, and um, you know I'd imagine he's probably watching uh, you know, the clear contingent that are out there uh, on the field tonight. And but he's seen one of them just pop over a score. Corcoran, Garrod O'Connor, Garrod O'Connor. Despite the attentions of David Tui, got his shot away, and it went wide. Yeah, again, this was. Some title to shoot, Oshin. Um, but uh, again, again, another, another wide. And you know, you will certainly uh, haven't been as efficient as they'd like to be. Mounsey. wide. And you just feel that you know, T West need to be taking all these chances if they can. Just bounced away from Mark Rogers. It was intercepted by Cahill O'Mahony. Don and clever play. Sean Long. Yeah, that's the type of waste of effort now. You know, it's not even close. That's that's just aimless, really, from Sean Long there. And, you know, has to do better than that. Mason. Great take. Completely unmarked, though, Rory Duff was. Cahill O'Neill. Wide. Yeah, and again... Too easy. I mean, you know, you can't give, you know, the Carl O'Neills and Mark Rogers, you know, some of the players that UL have um, that kind of room. And again, Carl O'Neill will be disappointed that that was a, a relatively easy chance that he'd normally convert. Launched again by Corcoran. There was a foul off the ball on the defender, so it's a free out. Yeah, again, Sean Toomey, no complaints there. You know, play the man well before the ball and uh, relatively easy decision for the ref to make. UL manager, by the way, still Brian Ryan. He's got uh, Ger Downs and Ger Maroney, and along with Adrian Murphy, and along with a few others involved. Jimmy Brown in charge of this man, Robin Mounsey, and TUS Midwest. And he's just watched another wide. It looked over to Washington, me. That was that to me. And, and the linesman here, Donald Wonders, is waving his flag. It has oh, to be over. Yeah, I mean, to yeah, me, yeah. to me, it was it was definitely it was definitely over. Um, you know, umpire probably just maybe. A little bit unsighted, very close to the action. But now, uh, now we won't be able to hear them. But um, well, they will indi indicate if they think it's a point to wave the white flag. Yeah, and it's good to see the linesman. You know, yeah, straight in the flag was up straight away. You know, I think he genuinely felt. Listen, this this was this is over the bar, and he was perfectly positioned to see it. You know, we had a pretty good view of it from our commentary position here, and I, I definitely thought it was inside the post. Rob Mounsey, certainly, his reaction uh, said a lot that he definitely thought it was over. And of course, you're not bitter about umpires at this ground at all. You told me a story before the game, which I'm not sure I was supposed to mention on air, but uh, you could you could tell everyone now, Jamesy. I think you're over it now. Yeah, um, yeah. Johnny McDonald back in the day uh, was unfortunately a, an umpire short, and uh, someone from UL, a student, um, you know, kindly stepped in and. <laughs> they weren't kind to you though, were they? With some of the decisions. Yeah, they might have one or two contentious decisions on the day that. 
when you lose by a point after extra time that you're not maybe thrilled about. Yeah, again, just look at wasted ball there from from TUS. An opportunity again maybe to put it in front of one of the inside forwards and instead it's just aimlessly into Dean Mason and uh, you know Colin Neal showing all his strength there. That's a good ball and foul for the free. And again, a guy who's very much going to be in um, you know John Kiley's plans, I'd imagine, come come this summer or come the I suppose the spring ocean and early summer given how uh, how early the championship actually starts again this year yeah, well the Allianz League starts for the hurlers the weekend after next and then the championship and I was looking at the dates and venues today starts in April Garrod O'Connor lining this one up yeah six all I mean TUS will be delighted with the way they've you know they've they've fought their way back into this game and Rhoda Connor, no mistake with that one. You all back in front. Keane Broderick. A goalkeeper you're quite excited about, I know. Ah, uh, yeah, listen, one of Harty Gup medal with Fallon's, uh, you know, along with his club mate, Keane Galvin, who's, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of um, with UL on the field back in 2020. And, you know, part of Brian Lohan's plans, I'd imagine he's in with the seniors at the moment. And, you know, guy with a good future. Paddy Donlan. Led with the shoulder, free out. Yeah, Paddy loves the physical. I suppose Broadford and East Clare loves the physical exchanges, but uh, a little bit too aggressive there. And um, yeah, they could pull for charging and you know, putting the right decision. Half an hour aside, by the way, in uh, Electric Island Fitzgibbon Cup games and Sigerson Cup games. Dusting himself off is Connor Flaherty. Such a big part of UL's journey last year in hurling and football. Got that equaliser uh, down in IT Carlo. Kept him in the tournament. And Mikey Kiley did what he did then. What an amazing night that was. And yeah. what is now SETU, Carlo. Garrod O'Connor. He's got a good flight. But Broderick picks it out of the sky. Blocked down by Rogers. Mikey Kiley keeps it alive. James Parr, the two Waterford men combined. Cahill O'Neill. O'Neill has time, has space. He created both himself and pops it over. Yeah, and you know what? Kim Broderick having done this was a hard part and taking a good ball down from under his crossbar, just needed to get that ball away. Mark Rogers, good block, and you know, you will. I suppose that work paying off with Cotter O'Neill ultimately finishing it. Is that a thing with modern hurlers now? They always feel they have to pass it rather than just clearing their lines, and sometimes they can play their way into trouble. Oh, look at it. It's become a possession-based game. And there it goes again. Yeah. Almost. They got away with it. Rory Duff, who made his Limerick senior debut last year in the, the Munster League, the pre-season competition. Somehow he squeezed through a gap and lets a shot go. That's Colin Coughlin. And that's wide. Yeah, I think that's seven, uh, seven first half wides now, I think, Oshin. Um, and again, you know, the UL management screaming here to get that ball into, you know, to Kylie and to Mark Rogers inside and you know again you'd imagine that um, you know they won't be happy with the lack of service probably that, that the inside forwards have got. James Power is a busy busy guy isn't he? He harassed the defenders for TUS there they have got it back to Sean Long but UL are giving them nothing easy they passed it out of defence well here's Alan Tynan Tynan lines it up that's going to drop in following it in is Shanahan but he won't get near it yeah, and again, having done really well to work that ball, you know, out of defence against just that final delivery. And I suppose, look at UL, maybe, you know, with an extra body back with the sweeper there, you know, Brian Amara was drifting back in. Um, you know, not easy to pick out the right pass, but still, you'd imagine they needed to do better. And, you know, O'Neill again, more shooting practice. Cahill O'Neill. And that one, yeah, it's Over just, the bar. just sneaked inside. Starting to find his range, Oshin, isn't he? He is. Just like that three in a row, the lead is out to, to three. Broderick picks out Donlan, who has played league but not championship for Clare. That might change this year. Good catch. Waiting for it and standing free was Pork Dunn. Didn't receive it, but he didn't need to because it's a free out. Good strong play again from Connor Flaherty. Yeah, again, listen, you know, physically, you know, these UL defenders are all big, strong. You know, 
Mason drops it in. On a cold night, it's hard to catch, but it does fall to Mark Rogers. And it's a 65. Yeah, and again, shows you his mindset, Oshin. You know, when he got in there, he wasn't thinking about tapping the ball over the bar. He was thinking goal. And, you know, Keen Broderick, uh, I don't think he knew too much about it either. It took a seems to take a deflection off, off one of the, the TUS defenders. And um, certainly that could have been... Uh, that could have been very, very easily in the back of the net. There's Rogers. I mean, again, just look at he's, he's you know, this guy's a finisher. Um, you know, as I said, a guy that we really have high hopes for in Clare. I can see why. 1 4 last week against uh, ATU Galway. Here's Garrod O'Connor. No mistake with that one either, Rushing. UL by four. Broderick going long, going deep. Collecting it on the run, McCarthy. Well, trying to collect it anyway. Line ball for UL. Yeah, Connor Flaherty right there with him and um, you know, giving you no room whatsoever. Flaherty. Intercepted by Grant. Grant gallops forward and then loses it. They're losing too much easy possession, Jamesy. It's easy to pick out. It's quite hard to stop, I imagine, but that's a fantastic tackle. Kylie thought it was his, but then he lost it. Good work from Casey. Colleen, who's dropped back as a sweeper. Fantastic take, finds its way to McCarthy. McCarthy shrugs off the tackler. Had the advantage coming, free in. Good yeah. work. Yeah, great take, I think it was by Shanahan. And we haven't seen him much, you know, and apart from that early free that he was fouled for, um, you know, he, he hasn't been in the game. And, you know, for T West of any chance, you'd imagine he is to, he is to start to impose himself on, on, on the play. But, um, you know, good, strong tackle initially. T West may be lucky to get the free. And, uh, and get something out of this. And you imagine Mounds, he won't make any mistake from here. Great take. TJ Brennan has been stuck to Shanahan, but if it's a good ball out in front, it's very hard for the fullback to do anything, especially when you're up against someone like Shanahan, who's tall and who can catch the ball. Yeah, and listen, you know, TJ hit him a bit of a, a rattle before, but uh, I suppose look at his Like size, I said, he's a fullback. His, his size, you know, he obviously big frame, had his feet planted and yeah. was able to deal it. And See Mikey Kyle now at the other end. Lovely, lovely fetch. Duff. But that that's going to drop. Going to go wide, yeah. Unfortunately for Toomey, he couldn't get his hurley on it, but uh, didn't give up on it. Yeah, and again, a kind of a nothing ball in Oshin, to be honest about it. I mean, you know, the quality of the delivery there from Oshin needs to be much better. Good puck out from, uh, from Broderick again, out to Paddy Donnellan. Rory Duff went to um, what I would call a really quality sports school, and probably school in general. Art Skull Reach. Jamesy, like me, you're old enough to remember when they won Blackboard Jungle. <laughs> UL on the attack. Garold O'Connor. Uh, trouble here now. Being chased by Tynan. But O'Connor is still going somehow. O'Connor will take his point. He's really turning it on now, isn't he? Yeah, UL. Listen, good, good score. I mean, again, there might have been more on Oshin. Um, you know, certainly. You know, they kind of nearly had a, a three on two and maybe might have worked something else, but, you know, in, in the circumstances, you know, Gerardo Connor happy to take the score. Fantastic work by Dara Corkin to get it back for UL in the first place. And then Duff uh, working hard as well before Gerard O'Connor got up the pitch, got his shot away. Here's O'Mahony. Grant. Great blocking by O'Neill, using his body. O'Connor. Mark Rogers. And Rogers isn't going to miss those. That's an exquisite finish from Mark Rogers. Yeah. But again, you know, I said you and management down in front of us, you know, screaming to press, 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 and they turned it over. Um, you know, and as I said, that's the type of score that, you know, as a management team, you really appreciate, you value, and I suppose the backs of the other end of the field, delighted to see their forwards, you know, working hard off the ball and 
putting pressure and making it hard for T West to get out of their own half. They've tried something direct to Shanahan. He has got the ball, then dropped it under real pressure. UL have turned it over again. They've been excellent on the breaks. Here's Colin Coughlin. Trying to sweep it on his power. Brilliant work. They normally tell you keep two hands on the hurley. James Power ignored that advice. Yeah, has advantage. Well. Pace, has yeah. options. Swats it out. Again with one hand. But the referee has called it back. I think Garrod O'Connor wanted to drive on. They will have the free in. Yeah, and he, he put it into the net after that. Um, yeah, well, great work by James Power. She, you know, just probably won a ball, flicked the ball that he, he probably didn't have a right to win in the first place. And... Um, You know, again, possibly Johnny might have let it go and played the advantage. But uh, opportunity now for Groda Connor, you'd imagine that he's not going to miss. I think we can mark this one down on the sheet. Garrod O'Connor. Yeah, absolutely no mistake whatsoever. And that's half time. Well, UL started very brightly. TUS made their way back into it. But at the break, it is UL who have a six-point lead. What have you made of it, James O'Connor? Well, again, Oshin, you know, obviously heavily favoured coming in. You know, you're imagining that, you know, at home tonight, um, you know, nice nice local crowd in that, you know, local derby that they weren't going to, to make any mistakes and you wouldn't see any complacency and... You know, I, th I think there, there was a point there when you know they looked relatively comfortable, you know, 6-3 up. Um, but T West just stayed in the game, and at 6-all, maybe after 20 minutes, uh, they'd have been thrilled with the position they were at, they were in. Um, you know, UL obviously those, those six or seven early wides, uh, some of which definitely were chances that you'd imagine on a normal day the likes of Carl O'Neill would have, would have taken. But uh, they've kicked on, they've stretched their legs, they've shown the quality they have on their side, and to be honest, about a six points, 13-7, Probably a fair indication, you know, Oshin, by and large, of the way the game has gone. You know, LIT, TUS have to work that much harder for their scores. And really, outside of outside of Robin Mounds, into Essex and Kevin McCarthy up front, um, you know, just don't look like they have the same firepower. How do they get Shanahan into the game? Do they bring him back a bit deeper or do they leave him on the edge of the square? It is very easy for me to say, just go long to him. But UL are actually clogging up the space so well around the middle that TUS aren't able to get quality delivery in. They're occasionally able to go long and hopeful, but it's very rarely with a plan. Yeah, and the, the problem is, I mean, you know, Colin Coughlin, Derek Corker and Brian O'Mara are sitting deep, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, you know, th there's O'Mara's drifting back in front of that D all the time. So, you know, I mean, Eric Killeen, that one ball that, that Shanahan did grab, um, you know, a few minutes ago, was a brilliant ball from Eric Killeen, you know, but, but again, he, he maybe really had to, to try to, to find that pass and, and, and he floated it perfectly but it wasn't easy it was barely over I think Brian O'Mara's head so yeah they're doing a good job of, of I suppose looking you know not really allowing any great space or options you know to get that ball into the inside line but Shannon is an inter-county player with tons of inter-county experience and he has to do a better job I suppose of you know finding a way to get himself involved in the game and finding a way to, to start imposing himself um, and that's uh, I think that's a valid criticism you know he's a guy that obviously TUS need to have on the ball and you know Robert Mounsey as I said has come out the field and, 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 and you know made some good things happen and, and at least look busy but uh, yeah TUS need more from uh, need more from Shanahan and I suppose just have to find a, a way to get him on the ball whether as I said with someone as you know sound as TJ Brennan he'll, he'll get any joy from direct ball into the square is another matter um, you know TJ Brennan well capable matches up well physically with him and probably just quite happy to spoil it and you know let Dean Mason pick up the, pick up the pieces Half time in this electric. Yep, half time in this electric card and Fitzgibbon Cup encounter. Remember, if UL win, they will win this group and they will have a home quarter final. If TUS Midwest lose, then it's effectively um, a knockout game against ATU Galway next week. You can follow uh, everything that's happening scores wise across the electric card and Fitzgibbon Cup and indeed the electric Ireland Sigerson Cup on the Score Bio app. The quarter finals of the Sigerson Cup. Uh, taking place next week we'll have two of the four live on this channel keep an eye out uh, on our social media channels both the electric ireland social media channels and the uh, higher education uh, ga uh, social media channels for detail on what games will be streamed we'll take a little break we'll be back with the second half half time ul 13 points to us midwest seven points Kylie, who really ripped it up in this competition last year he was 
on the Electric Island Rising Star team. Kean Galvin, a minor winner in 2019, work out, and away they go through Garrod O'Connor. He's got one from a free. Does he fancy one from play? Yes, he does. Garrod O'Connor keeps it on frame. Fantastic delivery from Long. That's a great Dara score. Tynan. Fantastic finish from Dara Tynan from way out the field. O'Connor laid it off. That's a shot from a long way out, which goes over the crossbar. Good pass, Toomey. Waiting for it and getting it. Toomey. Fine. Cahill O'Neill. O'Neill has time, has space. He created both himself and pops it over. You'd imagine they needed to do better. And, you know, O'Neill again, more shooting practice. Cahill O'Neill. And that one, yeah, in over the bar. Trouble here now. Being chased by Tynan, but O'Connor is still going somehow. O'Connor will take his point. He's really. O'Connor. Mark Rogers. And Rogers isn't going to miss those. Well, UL are ready to go for the second half of this Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup encounter. A Fitzgibbon Cup encounter in which they're leading by six points. They are the defending champions. Jamesy, they have a, a good lot of the team from last year involved. And they do look like a more solid outfit, a more physical outfit than TUS Midwest. Um, yeah, they look like an in a senior intercounty side, Oshin. I mean, physically, um, you know, just looking, you know, half back line, half forward line, you know, all... You know, big men, six footers. Um, you know the full back line. You know Connor Flaherty, a you know, strong guy. T.J. Brennan, obviously, edge of the square. You know, physically, 
all there. Colin Coughlin, huge man. Derek Corcoran, big man. And yeah, look at just just a well balanced side. And, and the thing about it is, Ocean, you know, you look, you look at the bench and you know there's competition for places. And if you have a starting position, uh, you want to hold on to it. And um, you know, so I don't expect to see you know the foot coming off the off the pedal. Um, you know, they know as I said they'd want to take care of business, get the job done, and um, you know advance to the you know a step closer to the business end of things. We've gone from Belfast to Limerick this week with live coverage of these championships. Where will we be next week? We're not entirely sure yet, but we let you know probably tomorrow or the next couple of days for the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup quarter final. Some real doozies in there. Some really good encounters to look forward to, including University of Galway and Old Money NUIG up against UL. A repeat of last year's final, which uh, University of Galway, then known as NUIG, won. Matthew Tierney still there, still doing it for them. DCU Douglas Aaron taking on MTU Cork. That's also on Tuesday night. Um, DCU and University of Galway at home in their matches. As are TU Dublin City Campus. They're up against UCD, who had, well, I won't say a surprise win against Ulster University last night. What was surprising was the margin of the win. They scored 7-8 compared to the 3-10 um, put up by Ulster University. If you'd like, you can watch that game back live on the Electric Ireland YouTube channel or you can check out the highlights uh, via uh, that uh, same method going to the uh, social media channels. The final game next week, which will be in a neutral venue because there's a 300 kilometre rule in the college's competition where if the two colleges are more than 300 kilometres apart or, or there's more than a 300 kilometre uh, round trip, then it goes to a neutral venue. So St Mary's... The ranch, as they're better known, taking on Billy Morgan's UCD. Jamesy, obviously you are primarily a hurling man, but uh, I know you're a big admirer of Billy Morgan, who is still <laughs> on the line and still as fierce as ever with UCC. Yeah, it's like a drug. Um, I'm just wondering, is Dr. Khan still patrolling he the is. sidelines for He's them as well? Around, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a fixture, obviously, at, you know, um, UCC games and, you know, you know what a great, what a great character and a great, you know, Gale and servant to the game he's been over the years and um, you know as I can remember making the trip to Cork uh, you know Shawnee McMahon going down for the 95 Munster final to Dr. Khan to, uh, for a fitness test on that uh, that broken collarbone uh, but yeah look at a you know a, a great guy and you know a guy who's very really smiling in his face and um, yeah it's good to hear that these guys are still involved and the drug and the love of the game is, um, is as strong as ever wasn't that fitness test just a series of shoulders from Dr. Khan on, on Sean? Yeah, I think Sean, he said he he asked him to do three press-ups. Sean, he reckoned he did about two and a half. And uh, I think Dr. Khan hit him a couple of gentle shoulders and he was past fit to play, you know. <laughs> so I'd, I'd imagine Lognan probably, you know, that was all well uh, pre-arranged in advance that under no circumstances was he going to be um, he told he couldn't line out. Um but uh, yeah, you can laugh about it now. This was almost a quarter of a century, or yeah. quarter of a century, on Oshin longer beyond that. This is Group D, by the way. Uh, next <coughs> Thursday is when TUS take on ATU Galway. That one is taking place at two o'clock. That is a home game. Now let's not um, presume anything. They may well storm into it in the second half. But from what we've seen so far, that doesn't look likely. But you know what? The great thing about this competition, and Jamesy, I know it from watching it. You know it from playing it. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, yeah, and too small and a hybrid. So a good start now is vital here, you know. I mean you know what they can't afford this position is, you know, this this lead now to go to seven, eight, nine, and then the game is um you know, the game goes goes beyond them and you know, they have to get a better return from the starting forward. And Robin Mounsey, the only T US forward to score from play, um, you know, and he's only got a solitary point and that's simply not gonna cut it against this calibre of opposition. At eight o'clock tonight, by the way, at Menuth University North Campus, Menuth University taking on U C D. Uh, you can keep an eye on that one via the GA score app. Now, they need a good start to the second half. They're certainly looking for one through Tynan. Hunting him down was Duff, who did a great job. Line ball for U UL. Yeah, and Connor Doohan is on um, for TUS. Not quite sure just yet, Oshin, who he's, uh, who he's replaced. From Shinron and Offaly. That one takes a few deflections. Fell kindly for Evan Fitzpatrick. Mounsey's on the run. In hot pursuit is Flaherty. Mounsey. Shortened the grip. Got his shot away, but couldn't keep it on frame. Yeah, and he, you know, he done the hard part. Um, you know, a bit of footwork left Connor Flaherty for dead, but uh, you know, probably needed to convert that one. 
TUS have an extra man back, but he couldn't gather the ball. He was under such pressure. Here's Sean Toomey. And that's some score. And that's the difference, Oshin, isn't it? You know, just... Well, Sean Toomey making no mistake there. Coming out to meet it was McCarthy. Gathered up by O'Dwyer. Mounsey. Wide. Yeah, again, Robin would be disappointed with that one. Um, you know, Kevin McCarthy maybe might have been able to put that ball over the bar himself. Uh, you know, again, doing the hard part. You know, getting out of their own half. But just a final shot. Let's see where this shot goes from Shanahan. Yeah, and again, that's, you know, that's poor from Aaron again. You know, just didn't really look just... You know, that's three wides, Oshin, and, you know, the space of that first couple of minutes and not the start they were looking for. Certainly not. James Power tries to gather. Good tackling, good work there from Connor Dewan. Hasn't given it up, but neither is Power. O'Neill intercepted. He was under real pressure. Here's Fitzpatrick. Shanahan has dropped deeper. Will it yield results? Yeah, that's much better. Shanahan's first of the game. Yeah, and again, listen, well worked there by Evan Fitzpatrick. You know, a simple ball. Found Shanahan, you know, who drifted out the pitch. Mark Rogers back out to Carl O'Neill. Lovely ball. Great ball. Here's Mikey Kiley. Great footwork, Kiley. And they found the net. Great finish right from Toomey. Just got his first point a couple of minutes ago of the second half now. Gets the first goal of the game. Yeah. Well worked, Oshin. You know, Mikey Kiley could easily have taken on himself. Could you know, Easy point was on, but knew that he'd shone Toomey over. And again, you know, took the right option. Unselfish play. And that surely now looks like it's taken the, you know, the game beyond TUS. The score difference may come into it, so TUS, but that, they have a decision to make here, don't they? But the, but do, they do they try and keep it down, or do they still go for it? What do they do? Yeah, th listen, you just have to keep working hard all over the all over the pitch. Um, you know, again, you know, I don't think you go all out defensive. You know, I mean, you you've you've got to try to at the same time, you know, put scores on the board at the other at the other. And ultimately, if they beat ATU next week, they're yeah, they're through. E exactly. You know, I mean, either way, they're you know. Their face in their own hands, and it's going to come down to it. You know, the head to head, obviously, between the two sides. Kim Broderick, not much he could have done about that goal. Done. Done again. Moved on. Great work between Dunn and Flaherty. Power couldn't make it his. Really powerful and ferocious tackling by Tynan. Long. Tynan. It's good running. Is there any end product up? Doing drops it in. They could do with the goal. But it breaks kindly. And once again, UL will clear their lines. Well, first they'll go back to Mason through Flaherty. Yeah, and Brian O'Mara just sitting back there as well, just... You know, that security blanket and uh, you know, going along now to Sean Toomey inside. Rogers there as well, but look like they clear their lines here. Yep, free out. Great work by Grant. 114 plays eight points. TUS finding it hard to get scores. Well, Toomey's goal came just after Shanahan got his first point of the game. It was a nice way to send a message. You think you're back in that game? No, you're not. Tough. McCarthy lost it. Picked up well by Tynan. Trying to slide him through is Fitzpatrick. Yeah, and you were so strong in the tackle there. That's an important score. A much needed score. It came from Tynan. No, I beg your pardon. It came from, uh, yeah, it came from Alan Tynan. There's two, two Tynans out there. Yeah, good score from Alan Tynan. His first. Yeah. 
They've gone score for score in the second half so far. UL are making a change. Killian Sampson of Shinron and Offaly is coming in. Shinron and Offaly featuring strongly amongst the substitutions. Sampson, a very decent player. Well, he wouldn't be part of the UL panel if he wasn't. That's a statement of the obvious, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Great battling again. Again, it's Sean Toomey. Now Mikey Kiley. Ball squirts out, falls for Toomey. Might break again for Toomey. Trying to get it there was Evan Fitzpatrick. Did the clever thing of just flicking it rather than trying to catch it. And then it's cleared by Paddy Donlan. Racing out his Mounsey. Great work from Samson. O'Mara got himself into trouble there. But UL get themselves out of it. It's O'Mara again who clears. Kylie is the aim. Kylie looked to me like maybe he was fouled. Referee lets it go. It's a bit of a break for TUS Midwest. Sean Long leaves it after him. Trying to maraud his way through is Cahill O'Neill. Corcoran took his eye off it perhaps. Great work by Alan Tynan. Yeah, great tackle, Oshin. They've upped it. Wouldn't quite fall for Mounsey. TUS do get it back. McCarthy looking for his first of the game. Yeah, that's better. Good score by Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, fine strike by the Tomb of Araman. You know, had options as well. Could have could have easily put that ball back out, but you know, backed himself, took on the responsibility, and um, you know, made no mistake. Fairness to TUS, they have responded well to that goal. They've got the last two scores. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, as you'd expect, Oshin, I mean, you know, there's no white flag been raised here by them. Um, you know, look at their up against, you know, just a, I suppose, a superior side. You know, a side that's laden with quality, physically stronger and bigger, more powerful, you know, more weapons probably all over the field. And here's one of them, Duff. Loses it, collected well by Rogers. Fantastic yeah, block down. It was Dara Tynan this time. Sean Long. It's a real battle zone in the middle there. It spills kindly for Dara Corcoran. Corcoran takes the hit from Tynan. Gets it to Duff. Good yeah. block down. And again, you know, TUS working very, very hard, Oshin. You know, you've got to give him credit for that. Alan Tynan, his attempted through ball was blocked, but it did come to Don and not cleanly though. He's robbed of possession. Derek Corcoran trying to get there is Sean Toomey. Toomey with Casey following him. Kylie. It's a free in. I think Kylie put it over anyway, but uh, by the time he did, the whistle was blown. Yeah, Toomey. Uh, you know, he's gone into the edge of the square now and, um, you know, another big man and he's, he's proven to be a handful in there. So, yeah, Grodo O'Connor will get an opportunity to, to add to his, um, you know, his tally. You'd be frustrated if you were Kylie, though. He's still looking for his first score of this match. Yeah, yeah. A big part of Davy Fitzgerald's plans, no doubt. Waterford opening their uh, Alliance League campaign against Dublin in Fraherfield, Dungarvan. Obviously, not this weekend, the weekend after. Garrod O'Connor. Puts it over his seventh of the game. He's fifth from a free. Paddy Donlan. You know, Paddy Donlan is one guy that will give you 100% anyway. I mean, you know, just really wholehearted player and, you know, continuing to work hard. When he had to run the gauntlet there, he did really well, but then they give it away. Here's James Power. Duff has Kylie as an out ball. Instead, popped it to Coughlin. Evan Fitzpatrick just got something on that and did enough to put it off. Yeah, Great work from Evan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, speculative effort from Coughlin. Um, but under pressure from Fitzpatrick. Under pressure, yeah, you could, absolutely, you, yeah. You yeah, could, yeah. That was right in front of us. You could actually yeah. hear the contact. Yeah. Here's Aaron Shanaher. He has come deeper in the second half. He wants to get involved in the game. Yeah, he needs to be more involved. But there again, you see Brian O'Mara just sitting back in front of that D, 
you know, what you want to see if you're a full back. I mean, teacher Brennan's night been made so much easier. The fact that his centre back is just sitting there, you know, as a nice protective shield in front of him. Cahill O'Neill just put his head down there after fumbling that one over the line. Even the best can make those fumbles. UL about to make another change. Coming in is uh, Brian O'Sullivan from Canturk and Cork. Yeah, Colin O'Neill again not happy with that feel. I think that decision went against him. But uh, yeah, another line ball for TUS. Referee unaware as well. I think he had to dis you were looking to get this uh, substitution made. Well, that's the key, isn't it? Be sure and let everyone know you're making the sub and then that the guy who's going off knows he's going off. Here's Shanahar. Yeah, that's a good score again. His second of the second half, his second of the game. Didn't score in the first half. Yeah, much better from Shanahar. You know, off his favourite left side, um, you know, good score. Brian O'Sullivan is in, and going off is Duff. Brian O'Sullivan, former captain of the Cork minor hurling team. So a young leader. Kylie. Samson, it had the legs. Samson gets his first. Good score. You know, again, well laid off by Kylie. <laughs> Brian O'Sullivan, part of that uh, breed of new Cork hurlers who've had great success at underage level, minor, under 20. Mounsey, not bad from the clear side of things. And showing off his skills there. A good score, an important score, yeah. a much needed score. His second from play. Yeah, good score by Robin. You know, had to work hard for it, but um, you know, off the hurley, and not always the easiest to do off the hurley. Couldn't catch it again a third time, but um, yeah, made no mistake. Well, only once in the second half has a team scored back-to-back -back scores, and that's actually been TUS Midwest. But yeah. this man's goal is really the big difference, and he might get another one, or certainly set one up for Rogers. Rogers gets his second goal of this year's Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup. A very good finish, following an excellent setup from Toomey. Yeah, game set and match there, Oshin. If there was any doubt about it, um, too many brilliantly, you know, just let the ball beat the full back and again, unselfish across to the, the finisher. And Rogers doesn't miss those. And you know, UL now really is starting to flex their muscles a little bit. Garold O'Connor sending it over from a long, long way, as you say, UL flexing their muscles and considerable muscle it is as well. Yeah, third from you know. play from Garrod O'Connor, an eighth overall. He's having a good night. Scored 11 last time out. Can he match that or do better this evening? Yeah, and still what? You know, we're, we're just halfway through this um, the second period. But uh, yeah, you well have been have been efficient, pretty ruthless, and you know, two well worked goals and two you know, two me century involved in both of them. Corcoran, Coughlin. gobbled up by Sean Long. It's been a hard night for that defence, but they have worked hard. They have. They've been under pressure, Oshin. I mean, you know, it's been a, you know, it was a test all night long. And there's Rogers looking for Toomey, and he's he's proved a real handful since he's gone in. Uh, since he's gone inside, Sean Toomey loses it. Kylie is there. Didn't maybe react quick enough. The ball spills. Who's it going to spill to? UL. It is James Power. Clever pass back outside. Cahill O'Neill. Yeah, and Carl took easy point on offer there, Oshin, and just took a little bit too much out of it. Maybe he was thinking maybe he might be a little bit more on. Um, but either way, you know, he's, he's frittered away, an easy chance there. Good play again by James Power. You know, like, you well have, okay, they have the marquee players, but they've also got the guys that you need to win Fitzgibbons. You know, the guys that, you know, work really hard, you know, do the donkey work, and, and certainly Sean Toomey and James, James Power, you know, lend that balance um, you know, to that you will attack. You know, with, as the, with the big, obviously, guys with the intercounty experience and and uh, you know intercounty pedigree, and 
both of those guys have impressed me for you well tonight. Great catch by Shanahan. There was a foul spotted off the ball. Yeah, impressive catch by Shanahan. And, you know, I suppose a big plus that he's been certainly more involved in the second half. You know, as they need him to begin. You'd imagine Mounsey again would make no mistake with this one. Mounsey, who scored uh, five in the first half, has now scored five in the second half. Yeah, you will again, just able to get out, of, you know, get the puck out off, find those passes. Colin Coughlin from well out the country. Yeah, yeah he missed uh, missed one earlier, um, you know, from a not too dissimilar position, but no mistake that time. But again, you know, well worked, obviously. You know, you well, very well organised in terms of you know how they set up on their own puck out on the opposition puck out, and um, you know able to get that ball away. You know, probably that be too easily. Coughlin again now looking to find the inside forwards. Bounced kindly for Rogers. He has directed that one wide. Yeah, I thought oh. I might have sneaked inside I the post. I thought so too. Yeah. That's why I stopped for a second uh, to. Yeah. I, I, I knew my, the final word in the sentence was either going to be wide or brilliantly. Yeah, you know, I mean, this guy's accurate, but, uh, you know, so TOS making a couple of substitutions. Looks like Eric Lean's coming off. I think it's Grode Ryan who's going to replace him. And I think uh, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy making his way off on the far side. Not quite sure who's on for him just yet. And we'll clarify that. Garold Ryan from Capo White and Tipperary. There's Connor Doohan of Shinron and Offaly. And there's UL winning it back again. Toomey. Just let it slip through the fingers. Tynan. Broderick. Yeah, and Toomey again, you know, not content to let him out easily. And, you know, just the effects of that pressure. Keen Broderick taking it out over his own line and, and a 65. And again, as I said, that's the type of effort that just management, you know, just get a thrill with us, you know, from their from their players. And again, as I said, you well to their credit all over the field, but particularly up front, the forwards have worked hard, not made it easy for T West to get out. And um, you know, no better example than that. And you imagine again Gerard O'Connor will will punish that that mistake by Keen Broderick, but great pressure by Toomey. Yeah. And drives to free the 65 over. He's having a stormer. Got the first goal of the game early in the second half. Here's Rogers looking for his second. Oh. Just gets away from Kylie. Played championship for Waterford last year, an ill fated championship campaign, but uh, a good early part of the year they did win the Alliance League. Here's Colin Coughlin with another score. Yeah, loves, makes a lot of those wing backs, loves to, to shoot. He's operating in midfield now, um, you know, a bit further forward. That's Michael Ryan, I think, is that other um, T West sub that actually came on, I think, for Kevin McCarthy. Okay. Broderick. US looking for any kind of inroad. Paddy Donlan. Spill kindly. James Power got out there making a nuisance of himself, but uh, commits the foul free out for TUS. Yeah, it was just a fraction late. I mean, three black jerseys, and <laughs> but uh, Power was, you know, going to fight for it and. Killian McDermott about to come in for UL, as is uh, Kean Darcy from Tipperary. Killian McDermott from Clare Castle. Yeah, plenty of Clare Castle players on the on the, on the pitch. You know, Keen Broderick, David Tui, both for TUS. Keen Galvin. Um, 
you know, started for UL as well, so well represented tonight. Going off Sean Toomey. Fair to say the Corkman has had an impact on this game. Yeah. You know, he'd be well happy, um, you know, with his with his Eden's work. You know, again, big, powerful, strong guy and put himself about and obviously got the first goal and century involved in Team Mark Rogers second, so you know, he's <coughs> did particularly well when he did the age of square rushing, you know, he was a real yeah. handful inside and um, you know, that's a nice option to have, you know. Himself and Mikey Coddy, two big men, and at the same time offering maybe something slightly different. Just off camera, Angela Hogan, the physio for UL, is just having a word with him. I'm sure he's okay. He doesn't look like he's received any kind of big knock or anything. UL will drive on. Rogers trying to get under this one. He does. That's a great take, Oshin. That is unbelievable. And he's away, and Coddy's in here inside. In. Rogers wants to take it on himself. No free, says the referee. Broderick will clear it. Yeah, and he should have given it to Kylie. You know, it was a, you'd imagine, a goal written all over it if he had. These finishers, uh, Oshin, sometimes that's what they, they do. At this stage of the match as well, I suppose you couldn't blame him. Well, I say that, but managers, they always say, well, do what you do if you were behind or do what you do if it was no score to no score. Here's James Power, who misses. Cushioned beautifully by O'Neill. O'Sullivan laid it off for Garrod O'Connor. Yeah, lefty, lefty with a little bit to do, Oshin, but uh, looked like a bit of a hospital pass. But um, you know, in fairness to Garrod O'Connor, he you know rescued it well and able you know, to make that little bit of space, and and the score was a little bit easier then maybe than I thought it might have been initially. Good turn by Michael Wright. But again, UL would affect me now with almost two sweepers just sitting back, taking away that, that direct ball to the inside forward line. Tynan looking for Shanahar, but not finding him. TJ Brennan. Well, Shanahar battles for it, wins it. He's isolated. He loses it. Great work by TJ Brennan. Yeah, and I think Brian O'Mara was back there too. Two big, strong guys just stood him up, and Shanahar, no real support arriving, and uh, they turn him over. I saw Joe Canning. Um, one of his many interviews ahead of his Lake for Gale, which I can't wait to watch, saying he'd love to have worked under Henry Shefflin, but just the, the timing and all that, he, he was retired, obviously, by the time that Henry came in, but TJ Brennan does get to work under Henry. More good stuff from him there, just leaning into Shanahar, chasing after it now is O'Mara, getting it under control is O'Mara. Yeah. O'Sullivan. I know she can imagine that there's, there's, there has to be talent in Galway, you know? Yep. Well, if there's one man who knows about working with great hurlers called TJ, it is Henry Shefflin. Here's Kylie. Can he get his first of the game? No. No, a tight angle. Um. And you will, I suppose, look at emptying the bench now, you know, able to take off Derek Corcoran. Anyway, the point I was trying to make in a very elongated way, that goes back to Henry as well, Derek Corcoran from Ballyhale Shamrocks, the club of Henry Shefflin. The point I was making was that if Joe Canning is talking him up, then obviously there's something special about him. Joe Canning, who played Fitzgibbon Cup hurling with LIT, as they were called then, under Davy Fitzgerald. Great catch. Easy stuff. Oh, chance now. Great chance. catch initially. Then last year's Mounsey. Oh. Mounsey buries it. Yeah, and there'd be a card, I'd imagine, here for is it Killian McDermott. Um, you know, had a nice... Uh, Nice slap at Mounsey on the way in. You know, he's down, uh, I'd say, feeling his fingers. But, um, yeah, listen, you know, really good finish. Really good finish, impressive stuff. And, you know, again, uh, nice reward, I suppose, for, you know, for the way they've continued to work, I suppose. Mounsey pickpocketing the defender. I think it was Dunn who let it slip, having initially got it. And then Mounsey, very brave, going in and getting the goal. Great finish. Obviously, lefty Mason with absolutely no chance whatsoever. But uh, oh. McDermott gets a red card. Straight red. What do you think? <sighs> Harsh, possibly. Um, I mean, again, listen. Like, I suppose any defender in the circumstances normally, you know, you, 
you have maybe a bit of a flake like that, uh, you know, you know you're going to get a card, but I'd imagine he was anticipating a yellow. And, um, you know, listen, Johnny Murphy, um, pretty decisive, you know, in fairness, consulted with his umpires, you know, he probably was cynical. I think good refereeing in the sense that he allowed the advantage. You know, let that play out. That's a great ball across, an opportunity maybe to get in here again. Odoir. Odoir still going. Odoir with goal in mind. Great Good save. save. Great save. Collected by TJ Brennan. Yeah, brilliant save from Dean Mason. And understandable, Oshin, that he went from the circumstances. You know, they have to probably, uh, you know, great touch by Rogers here. Mark Rogers, UL down to 14. They should still win the game. Battling for it there is uh, Darcy. And it is a 65. Mark Rogers going down. Got a bit of a knock. Well, he was very unlucky there, Odoir. Had to go for goal, but he's up against a top quality keeper in Dean Mason. Yeah, just probably needed to, you know, obviously, you know, had to shorten the hurley. You know, been pursued under pressure. Maybe not to get, not able to get the, the required power, but you've got to go low there, Oshin. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, that height is with Dean Mason. You know, keeper of his calibre is going to, you know, is expect would expect to save those. Kelly McDermott getting the straight red for UL and the look obviously it won't do any harm regards tonight they'll win this game. But that obviously has ramifications getting a straight red. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not actually sure. Is that Killy McDermott? I mean, it's, 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 he's listed as Killy McDermott on the programme. Um, I'm not 100% sure it is, Oshin. Okay. And I may be wrong in that regard. Well, we'll try and clarify that, but that's what he's listed as. Yeah, good play by Parry Thunder. Good cornerback play, you know. Won the hard ball and, you know, out does the right thing with it. And, you know, Kylie back in now on the edge of the squares. Grab one here. Runners off his shoulder. Yeah, it passes just a little bit behind James Power, I think, but Johnny Murphy's blown for the free and Lord O'Connor will have an opportunity to add to his tally as we head into the closing stages. I don't think anyone can argue with the red card, whether or not it's the right identity of the player. We're not 100%. This is Garrod O'Connor lining up the free. I don't think you could put that tackle down as careless. I think it is a straight red. I know in hurling we like to always argue a red card. I think it's a generation of defenders, you know, yeah. Noel Hickey, Brian Lowe and Dermot Sullivan, you know, that would, would see nothing <laughs> but, wrong but with I, that. But I, I think that's still the case. I don't think that's an old school thing. I just think in the sport of hurling, we just don't like red cards. Yeah, we don't. And, and you know, I'll admit that. And yeah. uh, I suppose, listen, you know, was there an element of cynicism to it? Yeah, did he, you know... Was he trying to deliberately deny a goal scoring opportunity? Yes. But a uh, good referee from Johnny Murphy said that he allowed the advantage and you know gave Rob Mounsey the opportunity to finish it and and, 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 and he did. Um well, we could probably argue again over yep. what Oshin, you know, whether whether it was the right call or not, but you know, decisive referee, good referee in this was in the sense that, as I said, allowing the advantage and you know giving the forward the opportunity. Here's Mounsey, whose goal well it didn't look like it brought to US Midwest back into the game, but it looked like it might create a bit of a rally, give them some confidence for next week's must-win clash against ATU Galway. UL really good at just working it out. They can go long, they can go short, they can go any way you want. Yeah, and they've you know loads of bodies on their own half of the pitch, and you know just quite content now to see it out. And here's you know, Kylie. Fullback got across, good work from Casey. And that's the full time whistle. And UL cruised through to a home quarter final in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup 223 to 113, the final score. James O'Connor, what did you make of it? Yeah, this notion, I think, no great surprise to be honest about it. Um, you know, I think we expected that, that UL would, uh, you know, would have too much firepower, too much quality, too much power. Um, you know, TUS probably were, knew they were maybe, you know, 
up against it, really up against it tonight. Um, and to be honest, but you know, no disputing the result. Okay. I suppose once Sean Toomey got that first goal, goal, you know, that was it. And um, you know, you will probably laying down a marker that still arguably the team they all have to be Lushy. Okay, and just to confirm, that was Killian McDermott uh, from UL who got yeah. sent off. In hurling, we'll always argue against red cards. He's a young lad, made a bit of a mistake, but uh, look, he learned from it. Yeah, the only the only real downer was on the night for, from a UL perspective. You know, plenty to work on, Oshin, but a lot of positives. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's it from uh, us here at uh, the UL Gaelic Grounds, University of Limerick, with a big victory against TUS Midwest, Sean Toomey and uh, Mark Rogers really turning it on in the second half, as did UL, I think, in... in in, in total, uh, it was their goals that, that really made sure of it. It was uh, 14 points to 8 when Toomey got his goal and then uh, it made it 216 to 12 points when Mark Rogers got his. Mounsey did get a goal for TUS. He was one of the ones who did play well for the old LIT now, TUS Midwest. Uh, but they're not out of it. It is a round-robin um, system in the Electric Island Fitzgibbon Cup. So they play ATU Galway next Thursday and if they win, they're through. Yeah, it's it's at home, Oshin. You know that's 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 an advantage. Uh, you know, I'm sure. You know, the Galway lads will have will have had a good look as well, though, at, at, at TUS tonight, just to see what they're uh, what they're facing. Um, it's it's probably a 50-50 game, Oshin. I mean, again, you've got to turn up, you've got to perform, and you know, TUS will certainly need more from their starting forwards. As I said, Mounsey, you know, one point from the starting six forwards in the first half from play, you know, that's not good enough. That's not going to cut it. They do need a bigger return from the guys up front. We saw more from Shanahan in the second half, um, you know, but from the other forwards, you know, arguably not enough. And uh, I suppose listen, you know, ju just lacking that bit of quality, you know, that you well just have at the other end of the, the other end of the pitch. And you know, but look at it was an honest performance. Yep. You know, guys like Paddy Donlan, you know, as I said, uh, you know, Sean Long, Colin, yep. you know. Evan Fitzpatrick that worked really hard and uh, something to build on but certainly um, you know I think they'll have their work to do to beat, uh, to beat ATU next week OK James O'Connor thank you very much for joining us if you want to watch highlights of this game they'll be available shortly uh, across all the social media channels of Electric Ireland and the Higher Education GAA you can go back and watch individual clips now you can watch the game back in full on the YouTube channel next week the focus is on the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup we'll be bringing you two quarter finals and um, going back to those social media channels that I love to talk about, you'll find out the details of what games will be on right there. That's it from James O'Connor and myself, Oshin Langan, here from the ULGAA grounds. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, you can uh, continue the conversation of this game by using the hashtag First Class Rivals. UL with the second win in this year's competition. They've guaranteed a home quarter final, and I think it's fair to say that few would back against them going all the way again and defending their title. For TUS Midwest, it's a bit of a blow, but they're not done completely. They play ATU Galway, and that will be a winner-takes-it-all clash between those two. Uh, that's it from here. Take care, good night, and good luck. Kylie, who really ripped it up in this competition last year. He was on the Electric Island Rising Star team. Kean Galvin, a minor winner in 2019. Work out, and away they go through Garrod O'Connor. He's got one from a free. Does he fancy one from play? Yes, he does. Garrod O'Connor... Keeps it on frame. Fantastic delivery from Long. That's a great Dara score. Tynan. Fantastic finish from Dara Tynan from way out the field. Connor laid it off. That's a shot from a long way out, which goes over the crossbar. Good pass to me. Waiting for it and getting it. To me. Fine. Cahill O'Neill. O'Neill has time, has space. He created both himself and pops I mean it over. You'd up. imagine they needed to do better. And, you know, O'Neill again, more shooting practice. Cahill O'Neill. And that one, yeah, instant Over the bar. Trouble here now. Being chased by Tynan. But O'Connor is still going somehow. O'Connor will take his point. He's really... O'Connor. Mark Rogers. And Rogers isn't going to miss those under such pressure here's Sean Toomey and that's some score Shanahar has dropped deeper will it yield results yeah that's much better 
Shannon Hurst first ball. ball. Here's Mikey Kiley. Great footwork, Kiley. And they found the net. Great finish right from. Trying to slide him through is Fitzpatrick. Yeah, and you were so strong in the tackle there. That's an important score, a much needed score. Be sure and let everyone know you're making the sub and then that the guy who's going off knows he's going off. Here's Shanna Hurt. Yeah, and that's a good score again. His second of the second. Kylie. Samson. It had the legs. Samson gets his age level minor under 20. Mounsey, not bad from the clear side of things. And showing off his skills there. A good score, an important score. But this man's goal is really the big difference and he might get another one or certainly set one up for Rogers. Rogers gets his second goal of this year's election. Just missed those and you know UL now really is starting to flex their muscles a little bit. Garrod O'Connor you know get the puck out off find those passes. Colin Coughlin from well out the country. Yeah, yeah he missed uh, an ill-fated championship campaign but uh, a good early part of the year they did win the Alliance League. Here's Colin Coughlin with another score. Great catch. Easy stuff. Oh, chance now. Great chance. catch initially. Then last year's Mounsey. Oh. Mounsey buries it. Yeah, and there'd be a card.